Breaking the News with Des Clark. I am Des Clark and this is Breaking the News, the show that breaks the week's news and asks four opinionated panellists to put it back together again. Joining me this week is Irish comedian Neil Delamere and his team is Edinburgh comic Jojo Sutherland and facing off against them is comedian and actor Maisie Adam and with her is stand-up Billy Kirkwood. In the news this week, this year's I'm a Celebrity contestants have been spotted at a secret photo shoot before filming starts on the new series. Due to the coronavirus, this series will be based in Wales, with one of the challenges rumoured to be trying to buy a non-essential item in a supermarket in Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be done. <laughs> a member of the jury in a high court trial was blasted by a judge after falling asleep in an Edinburgh cinema that broadcast the hearing. The juror apologised, saying he was sleeping after his nachos before begging the judge not to give away the ending. <laughs> <laughs> and Boots have unveiled a rapid coronavirus test which will reveal results in 12 minutes. It costs £120, but the retailer says it's actually cheaper if you buy it with a bag of crisps and a drink. <laughs> <laughs> right, you've met the panel. Let's crack on with round one. And this is our broken news round where our two teams have to guess the two major stories of the week that have been mashed together into one single news headline. So, Neil and Jojo, can you tell me the first story, please? Last night, MSPs unanimously backed hundreds of house parties in many areas of Scotland. Despite the ongoing ban on home visits, Nicola Sturgeon will be able to serve alcohol indoors again from next week under certain time constraints. Uh, Jojo, to you first, what do you mm. think our first story might be? Oh, might it just be the new restrictions as opposed to the old restrictions, which were <laughs> just after the previous restrictions? Do you know, I honestly did think, I honestly thought with the five tiers, I thought it was a new restriction because I didn't listen properly. I thought it was a new restriction that that was the amount of times we were allowed to cry each day. <laughs> just five tears a day. <laughs> That's your lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're absolutely right, Jojo. Well done. It is the news that MSPs have unanimously backed a Scottish government Government motion noting the new five tier system of coronavirus restrictions that is to go into force next week. The various tiers mean various different things. In tier two, for example, pubs can sell you a pint but only with a meal. There's now old guys all over Scotland gearing themselves up for 12 meals a day. That's how committed. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much we want it. But the thing is, Neil, these restrictions are brought in as a tiered system to avoid a full lockdown. So do you think this tiered system is better than a lockdown? Lockdown. The message is, is quite complicated because the rules are different all over the UK and Ireland at this stage. So in the Republic of Ireland, there's no meeting of households allowed. In Scotland, I think there's no mixing indoors at home at the moment. In England, it depends on what three tiers uh, you're at, which one. In Northern Ireland, there's no mixing is allowed between two people from different religions. So it's, it's complicated <laughs> <laughs> across the whole thing. Neil, well done for trying to make sense of it. It's just getting bizarre. The <laughs> Restrictions, I think they're changing so quickly. Obviously, people try to struggle to keep up with them. It feels like uh, monitoring restrictions. It's like trying to watch Midsummer Murders with my mum. You know that way? You're just yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> so who's he and what, what are they doing in it? Were they in it last time? It's got to the point now where it's it's basically just like Game of Thrones. Like Everything is fine except for the people who live north of the wall, but they also seem the only people <laughs> properly prepared for the fight. And winter is coming. Oh, amazing. <laughs> oh, so there we go. Cool. <laughs> this is it. Now, Billy, what about yourself, man? Are, are you part of Tier 3? We are in Tier 3. We are down the road and we are associated with our pals in Glasgow, so we're going to suffer together. I think our plan is we're all going to meet round about Paisley and declare ourselves an independent country. I think that's kind of our plan. <laughs> After what happened in Wales, what would you call an essential item? Well, I mean, it's a straightforward one. It's it's masks. Sorry, but the mask mm. rebels really annoy me. Those people, oh, I'll hate, I hate wearing them. I'll take a chance. Just wear it. I was in, <laughs> in town in Dublin and I saw a man in, in a doorway uh, wearing a mask and uh, in, injecting heroin. And he was wearing a mask. <laughs> and, he was like, and he looked at me as if to say, there's no point in taking any risks with your health. I was like, if this dude can wear a mask, just wear a mask. And what about you, Jojo? You might have seen the stories this week about the supermarkets in Wales blocking off things mm. that they didn't deem essential items. So what would you call an essential item? 
Marmite, and I'm actually in a complete panic about that what? because we're not drinking oh. enough beer, so there's not enough yeast to make Marmite, and they're already rationing the, t the size of Marmite you can get now, <laughs> and the, the pots are getting smaller and smaller, and I'm lich. I'm just, you know, I, I don't, oh. I don't care about sanitary products as long as I've got Marmite, I'll be fine. Wow, as and, if and we and haven't it, divided it, the <laughs> nation enough, Jojo brings Marmite <laughs> into the chat. <laughs> Why would you do? That? <laughs> and now a statement from the palace in regards to the marmite situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maisie, what about this whole story that's rumbled the past few days about whales blocking yeah. all parts of the supermarket? Well, what do you term an essential item? Well, well, first of all, one of the uh, uh, supermarkets, I think it was a Tesco, they didn't class period uh, products as essential. I mean, obviously they were they were wrong to do that, but moreover, they were wrong to tell a woman on her period that she could couldn't buy those products because hell hath no fury like a woman who has unexpectedly started her period. I mean, her husband was probably just in the background like, please, let her buy them. She screamed at me twice today for breathing out my mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is the news that MSPs have voted on Scotland's new five-level system of local restrictions. The new system will see areas categorised uh, into either lockdown, very high, high, medium or lemon and herb. So that's the... <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need to remember. Yeah, of course, it is changing coronavirus restrictions. That is the right answer. Well done to Neil and Jojo. You get two points for that. Now, on to our second story. And, Billy, mm. any thoughts as to what this might be? Right. This is the breaking of the restrictions, the breaking mm. of the rules. We've heard something like as high as 3,000 parties have been broken up. Wow. And to hear that is shocking, but being Scottish and hearing about 3,000 people rebel, it's hard to not be a wee bit proud. <laughs> uh, and I just think, <laughs> I know that's a terrible thing to say, but I'm hearing some of these statistics, like 300 house parties in Ayrshire alone. Since when did Trun become the new Ibiza? <laughs> Uh, well done, my friend, yes. The second story is that police officers in Scotland are breaking up hundreds of house parties every week despite the ongoing ban on home visits because of COVID-19. There have been more than 3,000 call-outs since the force was granted new powers in late August. Yes, Police Scotland are now responsible for breaking up more parties than Jeremy Corbyn. It's quite a feat. <laughs> Especially with what's going on at the moment. Who'd have thunk it? There we go. There's so much detail to this story when you drill down in it. Apparently in Mother well, about 20 people were found attending a, quote, religious gathering. Uh, the police are quick to point out that you can't call it a religious gathering just because the tonic wine you're drinking was made by monks. So if you're using that excuse, <laughs> forget it. But oh. this is the thing. Billy's right of, like... I mean, the illegal parties in 2020 are just, they just sound so uncool. Like, my mum, she was mm. a punk back in the 70s, and her party sounded amazing. Like, she had a house party where the bath fell through the ceiling and someone came and stole all of the doors. It sounded brilliant. You look at the Manchester illegal raves of the 90s, people in the middle of nowhere, hundreds of them, all off the head. Ours, in 2020, it's just somebody going, I actually had nine people in my living room and we were all from different home addresses. It was carnage. <laughs> 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 I love, and I, I would like to be there for the policeman that tries to break up the hen do where they're all clapping for him, waiting for him to strip <laughs> off. You know what I mean? Well, I think I think that's I think I think it's a really good time to shoplift at the moment because I think most of the police are breaking up toddler tea parties. So, do you mean they're they're elsewhere at the moment? It's a great time to commit an actual crime. Fantastic! There we go, Jojo. Every little helps. Forty-five jars of marmite strapped under her dress. Neil, what about this? Obviously, we're hearing about police Scotland. I'm sure it's the same across the board breaking up the house parties. Should we be surprised at this? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at the number of uh, parties that the police had to break up as part of Operation This Is No Crack. But <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that people <laughs> kind of break the rules. I couldn't agree more with Maisie. Like, what, like, there's going to be other house parties. And yet these people are oh, like, oh, I just, I miss <laughs> house parties so much. You know how long it's been since I heard a fella I don't know play the acoustic guitar on my couch. <laughs> oh, yeah, the full 12-minute version of Bye Bye Miss America Pie. Oh, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Did anybody see the party of Kim Kardashian West celebrating? In our oh, that oh, really some of us were at it, one. Des. So some of us were at it. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, Kirkwood was there. Were you, were you at this? Yeah. 
Oh, it was, uh, I tell you, it was a great time. She had Bombay mix, uh, Pringles. <laughs> uh, we, had a bit of, we had a bit of uh, Two Unlimited and Basement Jacks on. It got wild. That was Billy Kirkwood Sorry. at the party of Kim Kardashian, West Kilbride, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but she I, says hello. I, oh, I'm sure she does. Obviously, if you missed this, Kim Kardashian West was accused of being tone deaf after spending her 40th on a luxury island with family and friends. Now, here's what she said uh, two weeks of multiple health screens and asking everyone to quarantine is what she did I would just love them to have had to go through all that then she just took them blindfold and turned up at Millport be amazing <laughs> <laughs> this is your island party away pubs open till six <laughs> <laughs> yes well done Maisie and Billy you get two points for that it was the mashup of Covid restrictions and efforts to curb those breaking the rules and at the end of that round the teams are on two points apiece now, so much of our news is about public opinion, and this week we spoke to two Doors Down star, Alex Norton, and Queen of the Weather, Judith Ralston. So, Maisie and Billy, what story do you think Alex is on about here? I'm not sure I would want to go to this particular place. I've heard it's a bit lacking in atmosphere. Next time an Irish person goes there, they would definitely be entitled to ask for a wee drop at the crater. I can guarantee it'll immediately be splashed all over the headlines. Right, I'm pretty sure this is the water on the moon that they found, mm. or whatever resembles water. They found something on the moon and they're very excited about it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. It's the news that water has been definitively found on the moon, according to NASA. The discovery is a major breakthrough in the mission to explore the rest of the solar system, as well as giving a better understanding of the lunar surface. NASA called it an unambiguous detection of molecular water, which I think just sounds like what a cowboy plumber says when he's just about to treble your coat. <laughs> 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 An unambiguous detection of molecular water. It's your copper pipe, big man. Um, so, uh, Billy, a lot of people getting excited about this discovery. Are you one of those people? I am very excited. Uh, but the reaction in Scotland has been so interesting because even when we heard that there was going to be water on the moon, you know for a fact as an entire nation, we looked up at the moon and went, aye, but it'll not be as good as our tap water. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. That is 100% true. But did you see as well, Des, the, the, the planetary scientist um, from the Open University in mm. Milton Keynes said uh, it gives us more options for potential water sources on the moon. And I don't want to be snobby here, mm. but when it comes to the complex science of outer space, um, shouldn't we be hearing from like the, the, the experts of the really posh universities like <laughs> Cambridge or Harvard, the <laughs> Open University in Milton Keynes? I'm not too sure. Getting space advice from the Open University in Milton Keynes... Is it's like asking for medical <laughs> advice from Pineapple Dance Studios. <laughs> well, I've no the doubt they're thing... talented. I'm just not sure they're experts in this area. <laughs> Neil, I know that you, 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 you've got certain views on this, I'm sure, but are you excited by this discovery of water on the moon? Uh, I'm less excited about the water than than that they're planning to put a, a man uh, and the first woman on the moon by 2024. So this is all part of the same sort of push that's kind of cool. It's part of the Artemis plan, apparently, because Artemis was the sister of Apollo. So I really hope that they continue that twin naming convention. I just look forward to the John and Edward mission to the moon or Mars in 2030. I really want to hear mission control. This is cheeky girl one, cheeky girl one over. I really want to hear that. <laughs> Uh, Jojo, were you excited by the NASA discovery of water on the moon? I'm excited that there's any uh, travel to the moon. I want to get on the Virgin Galactica and go and live there because we've completely ruined this one. <laughs> you know, it's like being a small child and going, oh, I've, I've ruined this toy. Let's go and find a new toy. Specifically, water <laughs> has been detected on the sunlit side of the moon, which I think is great news for space exploration. Uh, bad news for Troon, which now moves down a rank in the list of best beaches. <laughs> <laughs> it was doing so well um, it, Maisie what about the cost of space exploration what do you make of that is that the best way to spend money at the moment I mean I don't know don't ask me I spent £45 on a foldable spoon in lockdown so what do I know about value for money <laughs> I think <laughs> I think we've been in this situation that long now common sense has gone out the window yeah whatever spend it that would have been much cheaper if you yeah. bought a normal spoon and started to court 
at Yuri Geller. <laughs> that would yeah. be much easier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, but I, I don't know if it'll pay off in itself. But yeah, it, essentially, it is going to be a gas station, isn't it? It's going to be because it's cheaper to make rocket fuel on moon than on the Earth. So. I just feel for the poor kid who gets that job mm. working in that gas station, just sort of, you know, what pump is it? Want any chewing gum for the road? They're half price if you buy a sandwich. <laughs> like, it's just going to be bleak, isn't it? NASA have said it would be much cheaper to make rocket fuel on the moon, and this is because the clangers will work for soup. <laughs> <laughs> it's an easy payment scheme. Yes, the discovery of water in the moon is the right answer. Two points go to Maisie and Billy. So, Neil and Jojo, to you now, what do you think Judith Ralston is talking about here. I'm a bit of a grump when it comes to this because too many people come to my door and I've never got enough goodies. This is going to be the perfect night for me because I don't have to open my door once and I can duke for apples on my own. Could this possibly be Halloween mm -hmm. and that kids are not allowed to go to door to door? Guising, I believe it's called in Scotland. Absolutely, but oh, you know, that's the right answer. It's the news the Scottish <laughs> government has told children to stay at home this Halloween. People have been told that guising and parties are not encouraged. So if you really want to scare people, dress up as Scotland's clinical director, Jason Leach, and wander the streets muttering something about <laughs> Tier 8. Um, <laughs> I am not. I'm. I'm not suggesting the kids like break the rules or public health guidelines. But I am just saying, if if kids do go guising, given how. COVID doesn't really affect them and it does affect older people. I mean, you'd have to say they've never been in such a strong position. I mean, they have a very strong position at this point. Like, if a seven-year-old turns up at a pensioner's house, that's not trick-or-treat. That is a hostage situation at that point. That is like them going, right, trick-or-treat, and I think we know the wisest course of action for you here now. Go and get the sweets. And none of that fun-sized muck from the pound shop. I want Ferrero Rocher <laughs> on a tray like the ambassador's residence. <laughs> Jojo, we're trying to adapt to Halloween this year. It's obviously very different. Are you a fan of Halloween generally? Absolutely not. I am the equivalent of the Grinch at Christmas when it comes to Halloween because I've, you know, I've got four kids and they're grown up now, but I loathe it. I loathe it, I loathe it, I loathe it, and I loathe children, well, which that's... is a bit unfortunate, <laughs> given I have four of them. Well... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maisie, what about you? Do you subscribe to this or are you a fan of Halloween? Uh, I was a fan of of, of Halloween and then like now I'm just I'm just going to channel my inner Jojo Sutherland uh -huh. on, on 31st of October I'm just I'm going to go full adapting the Scottish accent and just shouting out to the streets of Brighton get away with you <laughs> <laughs> Billy I get the feeling you're someone that's really into this time of year Halloween is the goth Christmas alright you can have your Santa I'll have Jack Skellington from the Nightmare Before Christmas it also it means something special to me because it's actually me and my wife's wedding anniversary uh, oh, for the very simple it reason it was, oh. it, it was easier to get a Chewbacca costume than a wedding dress that's all I'm going to say it's a lot cheaper <laughs> we saved a lot of money and can I say that she looked absolutely stunning that day. <laughs> I love you, sweetheart. I like I the idea I believe of Billy, Billy Kirkwood. Do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded uh, wife? <laughs> 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 yeah, how do you think it's going to work, though, Neil, Halloween, COVID in these times? Well, I think they could probably make the games safer because duking for apples, I would have called that bobbing for apples because I don't know if kids still do that, but if you don't know what it is, you put water in a basin, you put your hands behind your back and then you try and nibble a pink lady or if you're Wayne Rooney, it's Annie Smith. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, Maisie, in terms of Halloween costumes or actually just general fancy dress, what's the best that you've seen or done? Uh, best one uh, I saw was at, when I was at uni um, uh, a couple of years ago, somebody came, uh, well, two people came dressed as Theresa May and a field of wheat and just ran around each other the whole evening. <laughs> 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 ten out of ten. Yes. <laughs> oh, a very different Halloween this year is the correct answer. And two points go to Neil and Jojo. You're tuned to a socially distant Breaking the News on BBC Radio Scotland with me, Des Clark. Now, this round is all about who's in the news. I will play you a clip of a mystery person. All you have to do is tell me who it is. So, Neil and Jojo, you're first this time. Who is this? My fellow Americans, we still work for you. It is your constitution that establishes the rule of law and the judicial independence that is so central to it. 
It's that archetypal, judgmental soccer mom that is Amy Coney Barrett. It's a story that the US Senate has confirmed Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court in a victory for President Donald Trump a week before the presidential election. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden called the move rushed and unprecedented. As much as we should applaud women being put into positions of power, and I do, mm -hmm. and to applaud the fact that she is the youngest at 48, they haven't really thought this too, because she's just about to hit menopause and ho oh, oh, ho, then you'll need to watch out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Neil, what do you make about this? Yeah, well, it is a massive swing. Like, so she's very conservative and uh, obviously she replaces the very liberal Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So it's, it is a massive switch around. It's basically like the Smiths in 1985 replacing the young Morrissey with the current Morrissey. That's kind of what it's like. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> so it's a complete switch around. <laughs> if it was Halloween and you lived in Amy Coney Barrett's neighbourhood, she'd defo be the house that gives you a tangerine. Do you know what I mean? When you go trick-or-treating, she, she gives you a tangerine. She's, she's drawn the curtains. Uh, she's, uh, oh, my God, she's Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, what about Amy she Coney did. Barrett then? Big appointment this week, right ahead of the election as well. What do you think of it? She does have seven children and two adopted. Uh, so part of you does kind of think, are you literally just saying anything to get out of the house? Is that her big plan? <laughs> is, she, is she trying to get herself a second job just to get out of the house and away from the wains? You have to wonder about it. Obviously, we're talking about an appointment of a judge. So let's play Fantasy Supreme. Court. On this question, if you were the highest judge in the land, Neil, what would you outlaw? Those weirdos who eat cheese for dessert. Sorry, <laughs> they, they should just be ex yes. immediately, yes. immediately executed. <laughs> just, just, oh, God. Those people. Cheese is my dessert. Oh, if you're brought out a wheel of cheese, I'd eat the whole wheel. Oh, I'd put, I'd put your mouse in the face for, for cheese. Cheese is not a dessert. You can have it during the other courses. You can't have dessert during the other courses because you're a weirdo. Nobody goes, I'll have stuffed yep. pork steak and can you stuff that with Skittles and a bounty bar? No, it's wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. And stop doing it. Well done, two points. Go to Neil and Jojo. That was Amy Coney Barrett. Right, Maisie and Billy, it's your turn now. Who is this and why are they in the news? I have to go back to this old style of comedy that's difficult for me to do, but I have to do it because I'm so upset. Uh, this is, I think, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, or Borat, oh. uh, as he's, he's, mm. he's more well known. It is Sasha Baron Cohen. He's in the news this week as Kazakhstan's tourism board has adopted the Borat catchphrase very nice in its new advertising campaign to coincide with the release of the second Borat movie. Are you surprised at that? I love it. I love it. I love the fact they've done a 360 in something they absolutely hated. Mm. Uh, it's, <laughs> do you know the, the, thing, the thing is about uh, Borat as well, I mean, originally I wasn't a fan of Borat at all. Mm. Like, but then I kind of looked at him in a different way, realising that he's dressed like every math teacher in Scotland from the 1990s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not fully surprised that that Kazakhstan have changed their attitude because there's there's just some some things that, that are born from films that that area of which it's set in just have to deal. You know, it's like it'll lump it. I'm from the north, and we've just had to deal with with everyone assuming that all the lads here either have a kestrel for a best friend or are taking ballet <laughs> lessons on the sly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see um, Maisie's mention of Kess and Billy Elliot mm. and raise you Gerard Butler's Irish accent in P.S. I Love You, which can only oh. be described as a war crime. <laughs> I'm oh, so sorry. No. Oh, Neil, can I just tell you, yeah. on, on behalf of the people of Scotland, the only thing worse than Gerard Butler's <laughs> Irish accent yeah. is his Scottish accent, which... <laughs> 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 don't know where it's going, well, mate. Ain't you lost it in the Atlantic somewhere? It's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about this Kazakhstan absolute change in attitude from the government there? Yeah, I think it's quite a good idea because... Uh, you know, we're talking about them. Who has actually been to Kazakhstan? And mm -hmm. Jim, is it very nice? I mean, do you know what? I think they might be overselling it. I, I have no idea what Kazakhstan is like. Well, has we... anyone been? No. Um, nah. Is it near Motherwell? No, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just going into tier four, Billy. I think that's what's happened. <laughs> Here's a question What catchphrase would you live your life by? No good can come of Sambuca. 
That is what I would start my life with. Nice. It always leads to trouble. It doesn't matter. You start drinking it and you end up in a field shouting at crows. It doesn't matter where you start drinking it. Every time I've drunk it, you could be drinking it in the most densely populated city in the world. Five hours later, you will be in a ditch threatening to take a badger to the small claims court. <laughs> <laughs> Maisie, in the spirit of Borat's very nice catchphrase, what catchphrase would you love your life by? Uh, so mine is actually from my nan and it just goes, uh, if he puts the milk in first, the relationship's cursed. And yes, that is purely to do with making a brew. Uh, yes, Borat has not only upset Kazakhstan, Republicans in America are highly opinionated about Sasha Baron Cohen. Some of them hate the films, whereas others are delighted she's been confirmed as a Supreme Court judge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh. Sasha Baron Cohen is the correct answer. Two points go to Maisie and Billy. And it's time now for a final quickfire round, which is all about deciphering the numbers in the news. I will read out the headline. All the teams have to do is fill in the blanks. So get ready, teams. When we run out of time, you'll hear this. Very nice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there she is. That is good more than Scotland's Laura Maxwell there, really cementing Scottish-Kazakhstan relations. Right, here we go, teams. Let's go for it. A 47-stone what has been found in the Outer Hebrides? Man, also called Joe Wicks, who just couldn't deal with the pressure of expectation. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the other guy so skinny? It's not fair. <laughs> A 47-stone what has been found in the Outer Hebrides? Tweed jacket that got wet. <laughs> it does gain a lot of weight. It just retains it. Not the answer from the news. Sorry, Neil. I can give you the answer. A 47-stone bluefin tuna was found in the Outer Ooh. Hebrides. Wow. Uh, what is definitely not making a comeback after 12 years? Uh, is it my dad? He only went out for some milk. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is definitely not making a comeback after 12 years? Gerald Butler's Scottish accent. <laughs> it's, it's gone. I can tell you the answer is that Woolworths is definitely not making a comeback after no. 12 years. Very nice. Oh, there we go. That's it. That's the klaxon, mm. which means that Laura has Maxwelled. And at the end of the quiz, our winners this week are Neil Delamere and Jojo Sutherland. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Ah, commiserations to Maisie Adam and Billy Kirkwood. <laughs> And we'll leave you with the breaking the news. Breaking news, Justin. The post office is to cut a third of its cash machines in the next 18 months, with 600 ATMs to be shut by March 2022. Because of this year hasn't been bleak enough, the robot you lost your job to has just lost its job. <laughs> NASA's Perseverance rover is now halfway to Mars, having flown 146 million miles, making it even more frustrating that it's just realised it's left its mask in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bishop of Paisley has called for a COVID restriction amnesty to be put in place on Christmas Day, similar to the truce during World War I. My 85-year-old gran thinks it's a brilliant idea. Little does she know that I'll be putting her in goals. <laughs> <laughs> the news is broken. I've been Des Clark. Goodbye. <laughs>